Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri, and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use the MySQL database driver for Entity Framework to develop a command line application that runs under .NET 6.0. I will be using this NuGet package, MySQL Entity Framework Core, and the version that I will be using is this version that happens to be in preview at this moment. In future, there will be a release version. For the actual database, instead of installing and running a MySQL instance on my computer, I will be using a Docker image for MySQL version 8.0.0. So the command to download and run the Docker image is this Docker run and I will map port number 3306 which is the default port number of MySQL. I'll map that port number in the container to be 3333 out Side of the container and the reason I do this is just in case there's somebody out there who has MySQL running on the host machine it shouldn't cause any conflict the database container I will call that DB and here there is a environment variable for the root password I'll just set that to secret this is going to run as a daemon and this is the name of the image that I would be using so I'll take this copy it and run it on my host machine and this should download and run the image as a container to prove that the container is indeed running you can type in docker ps and you should see that the container is indeed running and here it says it's been up for the last 31 seconds. For our demo, we will be modeling the following entities. We will have a publisher with a publisher ID, that's the primary key and the name of the publisher. And we will have books and the primary key for the book entity would be ISBN and other properties would be the title of the book, the author of the book, the language of the book, the pages, and there will be a publisher ID that is a foreign key into the publisher entity. Let's start by creating a console application. So I'm going to do .NET new console and to specify the actual version of .NET that I want to use, I'm going to type in minus F net 6.0 and the output directory, I'm going to call it my SQL fire. Okay. This should create for us a .NET 6 application. I'll go into that directory. Now, the only package that I need to be able to talk to MySQL using Entity Framework Core is this package, MySQL Entity Framework Core. And as I showed you before, this is the latest version. It's a preview version. So in order to have this package, let me run this command. I'm going to copy this and run it here. So let me open this app in Visual Studio Code. I do this by typing code dot and here's my application. This is my program.cs and this is my project file. You can see that this NuGet package has been installed. I'll click on yes to be able to build my C Sharp assets. One of the new things that we have in .NET 6 is the ability to contain all the global using commands in one file. So let's take advantage of that feature. I'm going to create a new C Sharp class and I will call it global usings. And this is my global usings file. I'll delete everything here and just put the usings that matter to this application. And these are the ones that I will most likely use in my application. So let me save this. Now, I did mention that we have two entities. I'll create a folder here for my models. And in that folder, I will create two classes, one for the publisher and the other one for my book class. My publisher class will look like this. There are two properties here, publisher ID and name, and the publisher has a one-to-many relationship with books, and this is the two-string method. It will facilitate printing out the contents of a particular object. My other entity, the book class 
will look like this and it's got ISBN title author language and pages as properties this is the primary key the ISBN now it also has a publisher ID property that is really a foreign key into the publisher entity and this is specifically indicated with this annotation here we also have a two string method to facilitate printing a book object now it is always necessary to have a db context class when you're dealing with entity framework the db context class is essentially entry point into a database so let's create a folder here called data and inside of that folder let's create a class called library context our library context class will look something like this we need to resolve the book entity i'll do that by hitting command dot on my mac on windows it would be control dot so that resolves to this if i like i can take this out of here and go into my global usings file and type in global and paste this here so that i don't have any usings in my library context class so here I'm indicating the two entities that represents the collection of book objects and this will be the name of the table that will be created in the database. So there will be a books table and a publishers table. In the on configuring method here, I'm going to establish that I'll be using MySQL and this will be the connection string for MySQL. The server is on localhost. The database I want to create will be called library. The user is root. The port number I'm using is 3333 and the password is secret. These were defined when I started my container. Now in this on model creating method, I'm going to establish the primary key for the publisher entity. And I'm going to also establish that the name property is required. As far as the book entity is concerned, the primary key is ISBN, the title is required, and each book will have one publisher. Now, this allows me to enter some seed data for my publisher entity. I'm going to add two publishers here, Mariner Books and Penguin Books. And for books, I shall add four books. The Lord of the Rings, this is with, with publisher one, which is Mariner Books. The Sealed Letter, also with Mariner Books. And I have two books with the second publisher, Penguin Books. And those are Les Miserables and Anna Karenina. So this represents my library context class. We can go into our program.cs file and start using the logic that we created. I'm going to replace the contents of program.cs with the following. I'll resolve this. We'll add using my SQL fire data. I can also take this out of here and put it into my global usings file. And let's go back to program.cs, keep this with minimal code as much as possible. Now there are three methods, create dbc data, print publishers, print books. You look at this create dbc data, what it's doing is it's just calling the context classes database ensure created. This creates the database and also seeds the data. Once the database has been created and the tables have been seeded with sample data, then I can print my books. In this case, I'm going to make a query to get me all my books and include the publisher entity. I'm just gonna print a dashed line and I'm going to iterate all my books and write each book and the two string method will be called here to neatly display the details of each book. There's another method here, print publishers, and this pretty much does the same thing. You can see that I'm getting all my publishers. I'm going to display a dotted line and I'm going to iterate through all my publishers and print each publisher. So this is my program.cs file. At this point, we can run our application. So let's first do a .NET build to make sure that we don't have any errors. And fortunately, we don't have any errors. So I'm going to do .NET run. 
and this should create for me my database, seed the tables with data, and print out the output. And as you can see here, this is the expected results. We have two publishers, and then we have four books. If you're interested in actually poking into the database that is running in a container, you can do this. You can look at Docker PS, and this tells us that there's a container by the name DV that's running. I can go Docker exec minus IT, which is interactive, and I can target this particular container DV and run a bash session. This here indicates that you are in a bash session. So to get into MySQL, I can go MySQL minus U for user and the user is root and minus P for password and this is secret. So this takes me into a MySQL command line interactive session. So over here I can say show databases and you can see here that we do have the library database. If I want to use that database, I can go use library and terminated by a semicolon. And now you can see that it's using the library. I can say show tables. And we've got two tables, books and publishers. I can see what's in publishers by going select star from publishers. And this is what I have in the publishers table. I can do the same thing with books and this is what I've got in books. If you want to exit the MySQL command line interface, you can type exit. If you want to quit the bash session inside of the container, you can type exit. And now we're back on the host operating system. To stop and remove this container, I can go docker ps. And again, the name of the container is db, top it by going docker, rm minus f is to force it, and I can type in db, and that kills the container. Thank you for watching this video, and if you find it useful, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you, and see you in the next video.